سبحان الله بكرة وأصيلا الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله الله أكبر الله أكبر ولله الحمد إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا وسيئات أعمالنا إنه من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضله فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله وصفيه من خلقه وخليله بلغ رسالة وأدى الأمانة وجاهد في الأمة وكشف الله به الغمة صلوات ربي وسلامه عليه عباد الله اعلموا أن خير الكلام كلام الله تعالى وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها كل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار عادني الله وإياكم من النار يقول الباري سبحانه وتعالى في محكم تنزيله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون ثم أما بعد All praises due to Allah whom we seek his help, we seek his forgiveness, we seek refuge in Allah from whatever evil our heart conceal and from the consequences of our evil deeds. Whomever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants guidance will never be led astray and whoever he leads astray will never find guidance. And I bear witness that there is none worthy of worship except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has no partners. And I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his slave, servant and messenger. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in his book, O you who believe, Fear Allah as he deserves to be feared and I not except in a state of Islam. In a state of submission, submission to one God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Respected brothers and sisters in Islam, we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we say alhamdulillah for every single ni'mah blessing that he blessed us. We say alhamdulillah for every single thing that he blessed us knowingly and unknowingly. We know about it or we don't know about it. Alhamdulillah about all these ni'mah and Alhamdulillah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us the ni'mah to witness the month of Ramadan. Alhamdulillah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us the ni'mah to witness the Ramadan and to pray in Ramadan and to make dua in Ramadan and to read Quran in Ramadan. And the biggest ni'mah that we are witnessing the end, the end month of Ramadan. Alhamdulillah. And this is the biggest ni'mah. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah Al-Baqarah that وَلِتُكْمِلُوا الْعِدَّةَ وَلِتُكَبِّرُوا اللَّهَ عَلَى مَا هَدَاهِ That you complete the month of Ramadan and after that you glorify Allah, you magnify Allah, you praise Allah. Why? So you, you, you witness and you <coughs> give as a thank to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by saying these takbirat. This is the, one of the reasons we say these takbirat the whole day after each salah. We say Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illa Allah, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, walillahi alhamd. This is why we are thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed us with not only in Ramadan and what we did in Ramadan, even after Ramadan. So my brothers and sisters, we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in every condition, in each condition. We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in good status or bad status. If you are in a good condition or a bad condition, you only thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in happiness and we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in sorrow. We thank Allah while we are happy and we thank Allah in khushu and in humbleness and while we are crying. That's why this is the day, this is the time of joy. This is the time and this is the day of happiness. And that's why Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he used to be happy in this day, the day, the day of Eid. On this day, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to say to everyone that be happy, show your happiness, be joy, and show your joyfulness, and subhanallah. And this is the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to the people when he see any person, yastabshiru bil khair, that he will see a person, he is happy on that day, the day of Eid, and he will say, abshir bil khair, that you will get the glad tidings. Why? Because you are happy on that day. This is the reason that we are here after Ramadan, we are all here today, and after the Eid and after the Salah, we will go back and we will meet our family members. We are so happy. And this is one of the things and one of the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He blessed us. Anas radiallahu anhu, Anas radiallahu anhu, he is mentioning that Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he came to Medina, 
he saw some people having certain celebrations. So one person having celebration, why? Because the idol, the ilah, the god, a lot was made on that day and then year after year people are making this celebration and they are feeling happy. Some other people, they are another Uzza, they are another God, they are made on that day and year after year after year of many years, people are happy and showing their expression of happiness. And some other people from Aus and Khazraj, from two tribes of Medina, they are celebrating some day. So Prophet ﷺ said, what is this? So they said, al Aus, they beat it in one of the battles, Khazraj. So they are feeling happy and they are doing all these celebrations. In one of the another day, the Prophet ﷺ saw the Khazraj are happy. So he said, why they are happy? Because Khazraj did something on al Aus and they won. So Prophet ﷺ, when he saw all these celebrations, he stopped them. Why? Because all these celebration was based on shirk, was based on fitna, was based on revenge. So Prophet ﷺ said, no more celebration. Because the person, because the people need that kind of celebration or need something to celebrate with, so Prophet ﷺ said that Allah Almighty abdalakuma, that Allah Almighty changed these days with two better days. You can celebrate in two days, which is Eid al-Fitr and Eid al-Abha. So that's why this is the day that you show, you feel happy. You call your family, you get together with your families and friends. And wallahi, this is the ni'mah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to have. So we have to say Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. La ilaha illa Allah, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, walillahi alhamd. Respected brothers and sisters in Islam, we have to know something very important. That the Prophet ﷺ on that day used to wear the best clothes. The Prophet ﷺ used to have hullah. The special clothes that he used to wear in two Eids. He used to go and meet people. The Prophet ﷺ, his body always used to smell nice. But on Eid, he used to put extra clone or extra fragrance on his body or on his clothes so he go and meet people and by that he is thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with this blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted him and granted his ummah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so what I would like to tell you here my brothers and sisters something very important that we have to show the you know expression of joyness of happiness of everything to the people Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam one day on Eid he was sitting in his da in his room in his house basically it's a room and the room, as we know, it's attached to the Masjid al Nabawi. It's very attached. It's almost one wall. He heard some voices in the Masjid. So he stood up, and from the wall, he saw some people, you know, some people from Habasha, they are doing some kind of, you know, movement, and they are having some daggers, and they are throwing on one another because of Eid, because of the happiness. So he started looking at them, and the Habasha, the people from the Africa, those who came to Medina and they accepted Islam, they are Muslims, they have some traditional in Africa, in Abyssinia, in Habasha, that they have different kind of dance. So they are in the masjid doing this different kind of things and movements and throwing the daggers for one to another and catching it. And Prophet ﷺ looking at them and he is smiling. He is feeling happy. Why? Because people are happy. Subhanallah. And while he is looking and he is feeling happy, he saw to Aisha, he saw Aisha radiallahu anha. And he said, Atuhibina and Tamburi, would you like to see what's going on? She said, Yes. So she came to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, because she is short, she cannot see from the wall, he carried her and she is able to see what's going on. And she is seeing and she is happy and she is laughing. And after some time, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was holding, of course, a human being, his wife, not a baby. So after some time, the Prophet sallallahu felt tired. So he said, Afarakhti. Are you done? So she said, no, not yet. So he is still holding her. And then she said, Afarakti, are you done? She said, no, I'm not done. Later on, Aisha radiallahu anha, she is saying that, Wallahi, I was not happy because I'm looking at these Abyssinian, you know, doing things in the masjid. I was happy because Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam carrying me. This is the rahmah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. This is the mercy of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. How many of us did this with our wives? <laughs> Ask to yourself, this is the day of joy. Do it with your wife. Feel the happiness. Enjoy the happiness. This is the way that Rasulullah used to deal with his wives and with the people. Not only that, the Prophet told us 
to ask rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Respected brothers and sisters of Islam, why in Ramadan that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed us, why we are praying, why we are doing Qiyam al-Layl, why we are reading Quran, why we are doing Dua, all this, my brothers and sisters, just for the rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We don't want anything except that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala show his rahmah, show his mercy upon us, right? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describing his own mercy in Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying in Surah Al-A'raf, وَرَحْمَتِي وَسَعَتْ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ وَرَحْمَتِي وَسَعَتْ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ My rahmah, my mercy embraces everything. And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says everything means everything. The seven heaven, the seven earth, the skies and everything. And this is the rahmah that we want from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to have upon us. Why? Because wallahi we all, indeed we are in need of the, uh, of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Indeed, we are in need of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? Because we cannot live without rahmah of Allah. Either we are Muslims or the non-Muslims, we cannot live with the, without rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even if we read the seerah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we read the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we will see that every time he asks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala his rahmah, why? And he is the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Why? Because he knows that wallahi if the rahmah if the just a part of rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes upon you, wallahi qad taflah wa tanjah wa tafus. Wallahi you will be successful person on the earth before you die and you will be successful person on the akhirah. Why? Because of this rahmah. Why am I telling you this my brothers and sisters? Because in Ramadan, we ask Allah the rahmah, we ask Allah the maghfirah, we ask Allah the mercy and the forgiveness. And be sure, I'm telling you this, Allah Almighty told us and commanded us to make dua, right? And Allah Almighty also told us and promised us that He will accept our dua. So, abshuru bil khair. Get that glad tidings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that all your prayers, all your dua, all your ku and sujood is accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why it's a day of happiness and joyfulness and we have to thank Allah. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Walillah alhamd, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar, Walillah alhamd, Aqulu ma tismaoon, wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa li sa'il al-muslimin, fa astaghfiruhu innahu huwa. الحمد لله وكفى والصلاة والسلام على نبيه المصطفى وعلى آله وصحبه ومن سار على نهجه مقتدى وعلى أهل Respected brothers and sisters in Islam, the last part of my khutbah I would like to remind you and remind myself that this day, the day of Eid, is the day of happiness and the day of joyfulness. You cannot complete your happiness without meeting your families and relatives. So Wallahi, this is the day that you remove everything from your heart. Every filthy thing that you have in your heart, remove it. And especially the biggest right now is the cutting the ties. Cutting the family relation is the one of the filthiest things right now that a person can have in his heart. Wallahi, my brothers and sisters, you cannot feel the happiness without being in touch with your family members. So those who are cut off with their family members, the brother with the sister, the sister with the sisters, the people with their aunts, the aunts with their uncles, and whatsoever. Wallahi, this will not bring any benefit. So it should be you who will start and go and, you know, meet them. It should be from you that you start and go and message them. Don't tell me that they are, you know, very harsh. Don't tell me that their tongue is too, you know, sharp. Don't tell me all these things because Prophet ﷺ said to the same companion who came and said, he complained the same thing, that I have a family members, I'm in touch with them. I'm doing all the good things with them, but in return, I'm doing good things and they're doing bad things. I'm going and being in touch with them and they're cutting ties with them. The Prophet ﷺ said, you are better than them. Same thing, my brothers and sisters. This is the time to join the hearts, my brother. Wallahi, this is the time to safa al qulub wa jam al qulub That you bring the hearts together. Don't worry about anything. You are the better 
than the other people in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So what problem that you are having with your brother, with your sister, with your aunt, uncle, whosoever, don't care. Send them the message, give them the call, whatsoever, just do it. They reply, they don't reply, it's not a big deal. You did it, what's important for you to please is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in a hadith, يأس الشيطان أن يعبد في جزيرة العرب ولكن رضي بالتحرش بينهم that شيطان couldn't succeed that the Arab Peninsula the people of the, uh, the people of the Arab Peninsula to worship him but he was succeed to poke between the brothers to poke between the Muslims that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran إن الشيطان ينزغ بينهم the شيطان pokes between the Muslims شيطان pokes between the believers that's why he wants to cut off your relation with your Muslim brothers and sisters. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also said in the Quran, my brothers and sisters, inna kayda shaytani kana ba'ifa. The plotting, the planning of shaytan is da'if, is weak. And wallahi, you are not that weak. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made you strong. So cannot be the weak plotting or the weak shaytan should take over you. It, that cannot be. And if he's taking over you, then there's a big problem in you. So, do not let shaitan come over you and start poking you against your families, brothers, neighbors, whatsoever. Cut that thing. Bring the hearts together. Let them feel the joyness. Let them feel, let this day is a, be a different day than any other day. Especially for the sisters. I request all the brothers and sisters, you know, to get in touch with their family members by call, by message and whatsoever. And don't think about anything happened. Today, clean the heart. And wallahi by Allah, today I cleanse my heart from every single person who did anything bad to me. And this is my promise, I want you to promise the same thing between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you will forgive everything. And last but not least, what I would like to say that do not forget those who are below you. From the workers, from the laborers, from the maids, from the drivers, at the end they are human beings. So show mercy upon them. And if you can, give them gifts. If you can, give them few dananir, few dirham whatsoever to let them feel happy. By that, you will get the rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. By forgiving your family members and brothers and sisters and whosoever, you will get rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't you want the rahmah from Allah? Don't you want Allah to forgive you, my brothers and sisters? Then you have to forgive the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you will attain, you will gain the rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is the day of joy. This is the day of happiness. I want you, all of you, to thank Allah by saying Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Walillah alhamd. I conclude my khutbah with the dua that Allahumma a'izz al-Islam al-Muslimin, Allahumma a'izz al-Islam al-Muslimin, Allahumma a'izz al-Islam al-Muslimin, Allahumma a'jalna sababa al-Izzat hadi al-Umma, Ya Rabb al-Alamin, Allahumma a'fir lana dunubana, wa kaffir anna sayyatina, wa tawaffana ma'a al-Abraq, Allahumma a'fir lana dunubana, wa kaffir anna sayyatina, wa tawaffana ma'a al-Abraq, Allahumma la tada' lana fi yawmin hadha al-Mubarak, fi hadha al-Yawm al-Mubarak, dhamban illa ghafartah, wa la daynan illa qabayta, wa la hajatan min hawaaj al-Dunya hiya laka ridan, wa lana fiha salah illa qabaytaha wa yisartaha lana, Ya Rabb al-Alamin. اللهم لا تدع لنا ذنبا إلا غفرته ولا حيرانا إلا دللته ولا مريضا إلا شفيته ولا مريضا إلا شفيته ولا مريضا إلا شفيته يا رب العالمين and I want all of you to stand up and greet every single person that you see on your left and on your right وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وآخر دعوان الحمد لله رب العالمين